So Rush, let's tie on some bait hooks. What brings me over here is the great fishing. And what are we expecting under the kelp? You know, the kelp batty fishing is unique to the Pacific Ocean because we have the kelp. Oh, dude, Rush, there's like 20 with them. There's a mess of mines here. If you have a general idea, you know, where these kelp patties are going to be, you're going hunting. Nice. Nice bull. Sometimes it comes easy, and sometimes you got to work for it. We're chasing it. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you. What you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300-pound tunas. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one! He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. San Diego is my town. Southern California is where I was raised, and I really do like to be the ambassador for my backyard. So now this is downtown San Diego. Pulling into it, yeah, this is the skyline. California has its own mystique for a lot of people, and you don't have to fish to love it, but it's a place that everybody wants to check out, and for good reason. I've been here almost every other month for the past few months now, and just driving around and really getting a chance to take it all in, I mean, the, this place is beautiful. When I have friends come in from out of town or business associates or whatever, I really do try to play ambassador. I try to play host, show them the cool things about my backyard. A big part of that is always going to be food. And fortunately, when me and Rush get together and our camera crew, I got to feed those guys about every three hours. So you got to get them some tacos. Salute? Is that, a, is that how you say it? Yeah, salute's like you drink. Salute. Like you OK, call. like, gotcha. Uh, three taco special like three times yeah. or four times. Sure. Can we get six uh, pastor, six carne asada, two carne asada molitas, one carne asada nacho? I got all these little spots around town having grown up here, you know, and it's cool to take them, show them my backyard, show them something a little bit different. As a whole, I think California has a totally different culture than the Keys. It's a lot of food. I don't know if I'm up for the task, but I'll try my best. Get to work. We got a lot of fishing to do. Great food, great weather, you know, and what brings me over here is the great fishing. We're going to do probably two different things. We kind of got to figure out how to time it. That patty hopping stuff has been pretty solid. You know, nothing huge, but a lot of, you know, 8 to 20 pound Dorados and Yellowtails and stuff. You gotta check a, a, a bunch of kelps, but when you find the right one, like the other day, we whacked 12 off of the third kelp we were on. Load up. One of the fisheries I've got to dabble in a little bit, but really haven't got to see and experience the full experience is the kelp patty fishery. Patty hopping goes by a lot of different names, but it's a very unique fishery for us here. Those kelp patties are literally floating fads and the primary candidates are always gonna be the yellowtail and the dorado, but it could be a whole host of other species that show up to the party. Now we're gonna stop at the bait barge, or we're gonna make some bait. Bait's really tiny right now, so it might take a little bit for chum, but the key is gonna be, I've been buying chum buckets, little ones, and just making mackerel in the morning. Put 100 pieces in the thing and you're golden. These are delicious. Do you want me up a little further? Yeah, put the tank right where that's at. Uh, just a, we'll just take a scoop. Is it the same stuff, small? Yeah, just give us a scoop. Man, these are some fancy swivels. Ball bearing swivels on the tzatzikis. Max, that one we're gonna try and make here. It's unfortunately, this season, I mean, you know how much I love my local bay vendors. They've had real small sardine. We're in a live bait fishery here in Southern California. We're the only place on earth where you can pull up to a bait dock and buy a bunch of awesome bait. How many pieces do we want to make? Uh, 50. 
And during the summer, sometimes that bait struggles. And sometimes it's tougher to make and it doesn't do as well in the receivers because the water's so warm. This year, we're seeing the warmest water we've seen since the El Nino. I mean, people don't realize when you're penning bait how important that cure time is. And I can't keep mackerel penned up. I told I had 100 mackerel in my pen in the slip, and it the water, water, time, water temperature too warm. Yeah. So before we go offshore this year, especially, you want to have every chance you can. We're loading up some of those smaller, we call them firecracker, four-inch sardines, so we've got some good chum bait. But you really can't leave the dock without stopping and getting some mackerel for your tank. Oh man, these are great. That's a great size. If you can give me a whole well of these, I'll be very happy. I'm here to, I'm here to please you. So on the way out, first stop now is we jig bait. Throw out a chum bucket, which really makes it easier, make our bait, and then we can head offshore. These are nice baits right here. Yeah, perfect. Oh, what I wouldn't do for your bait. I say it all the I say it all the time, but every time we catch it or every time I see it. Yeah, but you got the fishing. We got I the, do catch a very similar bait to that in deep water called a tinker mackerel. Yeah, I've heard of them. I've never fished. Looks just like these. Now, once I roll up to a kelp, I've got more tricks up my sleeve than I normally might. They're all over us now. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evan Rood, Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Simrad, go with confidence, go with Simrad. Nomad Design, crafted by experience. And BDOutdoors.com. So Rush, let's tie on some bait hooks. We're gonna work our way out to San Clemente area okay. for that bigger tuna, but along the way, we could run into anything like this. Some kelp patties, some breaking tuna. And what are we expecting under the kelps? Under the kelp patty, we're gonna find Dorado, yellowtail, possibly tuna. You ever see the smaller blue fins under the kelp? 100%. That's how we usually catch them until these last few years. You know, the kelp patty fishing is unique to the Pacific Ocean because we have the kelp, but it's also cool in that that same kelp that grows on the central coastline that gives life for calico bass and sheep's head and rockfish down on the bottom. And I mean, it's just, it's a magnet for life. It then breaks off of the coast as it gets older. And if you know how California's shaped, it's kind of got an elbow. These kelps are really coming off the coast at the elbow, and they're blowing straight down with the currents, and then they kind of wrap around as the currents follow the coast, and they show up in our waters. All right, Rutchie, you remember the program here? Oh, yeah. Just kind of casting right under the kelp, right? Not right under it. That's a big mistake that everybody makes. They think the fish are literally living underneath the kelp, which, when you think about it, it's ridiculous, right? Right. You just need to be around the kelp. This is a pretty good one. I like our chances here. I'm going to throw a little bit of the small bait for chum. These kelps are just structure on the surface, holding bait and holding food for these fish. That one's right. There he out. is. Is that that one? Oh, dude, Rush, there's like 20 with them. There is a mess of mahis here. So you're saying I might be able to catch one? I'm not promising anything, big boy. So this is that kelp. Oh, fishing. God. I might need to get out. He's, He's bigger than he looks. He, that's, that's a good one there. I'm hooked up right okay, here. OK, step out of that corner. I got a bull on too, I think. Oh, oh dude, that's a good I can one to lift over the side. I cannot, I'm gonna need a gaff. Local knowledge, smooth as silk. <laughs> Some nice fish. That is. That's a good fish. No, that's a respectable Dorado anywhere. Um, so pretty to see these schools in the water. Hey, look at this dude, Rush. Very respectable, you know, and there's a whole bunch just like them now. Oh, there. they're all, you know, cookie cutters. Some smaller ones I saw, but for the most part, they're all cookie cutters. You like that mad scat, that's for sure. I think a lot of people get misconstrued when they think of mahi fishing. A lot of people will say, hey, I don't want to sit out there and troll all day. And I, I agree with that. I totally understand that. Oh! oh he just destroyed that lure. That's another good bull. That is not bad. You know, I tell them, look, we're not gonna troll all day. If we're going mahi fishing, 
we're gonna be running until we find something. And that's basically the same thing we're doing out here in Southern Cal. Dude, you called it, you were right. You just find the right kelp and oh, no, load it. You gotta go through a few of them. This, I bet, is also fun with a fly rod. Yeah, you know what? I got a buddy coming out next week, and we're gonna try fly and get him. Fly fisherman? Yep, this on fly. Yeah, I'd actually. say let's, let's put a few of these in the box. I wanna eat them. Nice fish. Not bad for a little half day Dorado. We've been out for an hour and a half. Awesome, man. I love catching them. Catching them, yeah. eating them. I mean, looking at them. So they're, much fun. They're such an awesome fish. And you know what? We haven't chummed them a bunch or anything. I think we can keep doing this for a little bit here. You know, a lot of people will go offshore and just bounce around hoping to stumble into a kelp. Over the years, I've gotten a lot more scientific about it. And there's a few things that I feel really help your chances. Another dodo? Another dodo. Smaller guy. You know, we have a, a service that we run through BD Outdoors called fishdope.com. And what fishdope does is it kind of tells you what happened the day before on the fishing grounds. We've got reporters that gather information and then they share that. Well, if I hear one zone, the kelps are holding better fish, okay, I'm gonna start there. That's my first thing, right? For me, with clients, I roll up on a school of fish this size, happy as could be. You know, we always wanna pick at some bigger ones, but they want some dinner, they wanna have a lot of fun. The size is perfect Dude, right here. Slider gear, it's a blast. You I love catching The next thing I'll do is I'll go back to Fish Dope and I'll look at a sea surface temperature chart. And what these charts do is they tell us what the ocean temperatures are like. This thing's loaded. I mean, we should be oh, yeah. as soon as they, they, they hit off. the bottom. I mean, hit the hit the water. The other thing that they show is where those temperature breaks occur, there's two different currents that are coming together. So you might have 74 degree water and 76 degree water right up against each other. They got them right behind the boat. Where those two currents collide, that forms an area where you're gonna have a multiple opportunities to find kelp that the current has pushed together and is holding in one place. On again? Yeah, little guy. One thing about fishing out here in Southern California that I've really noticed, it's a little different for me back home is the water temperature is gonna dictate what you catch. These guys are always looking for a certain water temperature to catch certain fish. Our fishery is different from a lot of places. We fish a box that's about 100 miles out to the west and about 100 miles south. So what we typically do, we have a few different ways that we kind of figure out, you know, where the fish are or that we communicate. Ooh! <laughs> mow, mow. Uh, That's so awesome. Nice coolie there. We're fortunate here off Southern California. We have a lot of structure. I love seeing them come up next to the boat all mad with the bars on them. Our typical ocean depth where we're fishing is anywhere from 3,500 to 6,000 feet deep. Well, we have a lot of spots that raise up much higher than that. They're still very deep, but they provide upwelling and current that attracts fish. Ooh, barely hooked. Watch yourself. He's going to pop off if he shakes it in. Are you, are you worried about it? No, I don't care about him getting away. <laughs> oh, clean release. When you can find a piece of kelp that's near a piece of structure, it's really game on, typically. Ooh. Got him. What you got there, Rutchie? Uh, that's something a little better. Oh, that's so cool. Look at him greyhounding right there. I've heard of mahi referred to as the ultimate game fish. Just sitting here watching dolphin greyhound right behind the boat. It's mahi madness. And it really is. I mean, this fish is a great fighting fish, acrobatic. Great eating. You wanna grab this guy for me? I don't want him. I mean, I was polite <laughs> enough to, to grab a few of yours. Yeah, you might be able to convince me to do it. Yeah, he's big enough to crush him. Oh man, there's five more off the side here. Still bit. When you get into him, you can really get into him. There could be anywhere from five to 500 fish around the boat, which instantly turns to total chaos. Watch mine, watch mine. Oh, damn. Did you get it or no? Nah. Come under me. Got it? Yeah, you're clear. Incoming. Oh, on the cameraman's jacket for bonus points.
cool with the surface lure, you know? You see them come right behind it. Yeah, those Tracking it. The blow-ups are better than when they get it. Every year is a little bit different on the kelp patties. I mean, typically, yellowtail you can count on. Sounds like a bite. It's coming straight in like those first ones. A oh, little tiny, dude. With this shift in our seasonal patterns, or whatever you want to call it, you know, it's been May and we're catching bluefin tuna. That's unheard of. Now it's right off the kelp. Bullet tuna? Oh, they're chasing it. There it is. Little tiny tunas, huh? Is that what it was? Looks like it. Oh, yellow fin! Or it's Are a blue fin. It's a blue fin. Is it? It did look blue. I thought I was about to say black fin, but. Oh. You know, some years we get so much warm water, you can actually catch more Dorado than you do tuna, and the tuna will kind of disappear. You got him? Yeah. What the hell? He didn't even fight. There's always something going on around a kelp. And on this particular day, I saw something I've never seen before. That's a surprise. You're right, you never know what you're gonna catch out here, huh? Check that out. And they were like marching, they're right there on the other side of the kelp. Very Marched cool. Right at us. It looked like very small fish, like mackerel, that were popping on the surface eating krill or something. Where's that hook? Oh, okay. Deep. I'm, I'm safe, I'm safe. Only my, only my second bluefin. Like, hey, Rush, throw a jig. He throws a mad scat into it, jerks it twice, and he's bit. And a bluefin swims right to the boat, and I gaff it. I don't think that fish ever even pulled any drag. God, they look so much like our blackfin when there's that, that size. You got him? You want to bring him fish. in the boat? hold on. Man, that was crazy. To have a school of bluefin acting like mackerel, swim towards the boat, throw a lure, get an instant bite, have it not fight and pull drag, the ocean is a mysterious place. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Andro's Boatworks. Adventure never ends. Must add hooks. Defining fishing hooks since 1877. AFTCO, the American fishing tackle company. Costa, see what's out there. Seakeeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Fleer, the world's sixth sense. And by Casa Vieja Lodge. Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. All right, so here's the plan for today. Basically more of the same thing we did yesterday. We're gonna get out there a little earlier today. We're gonna look for kelp patties. And we're gonna go to a different zone that just typically holds more yellowtail. I wanna get you one of those big slug yellowtail. All right, man, let's get, let's get off the dock. Just like a lot of fisheries, you have a general idea, you know, where these kelp patties are gonna be. You're going hunting. You're hunting for this kelp. And just like any other hunt, sometimes it comes easy and sometimes you gotta work for it. The other thing that is really crucial, having your best kelp fishing game, is to elevate yourself. And I don't care if you're standing on the gunnel of a 17-foot whaler, or you're in the tower of a 60-foot Bertram, or you're doing what we're doing in between, which is standing on top of our hardtop and driving. All right, Rush, same program here. You know the deal. All right. Oh, my gosh. There you go. Think your minnow got eaten, Captain Rush? Oh, that's a good one. Need me to come down? Nah, you're all right. Nice. Nice bowl. So funny how people go crazy over the bulls, that big blunt head. Oh, dude, I'm one of them. You're one of them. I don't get any people who say they don't like catching Dorado. I know. Yeah, there's a nice cow with them. Let me see if I can hook the cow. Dude, that's a nice local bull, buddy. Good bull head. Go. Oh, man, I hit that plate Hard in spot. his head. Dang, that is crazy. That's perfect, though, for dude, a Dude, that is up. a beautiful local fish for San Diego. Nice job, dude. And we're like eight miles off the beach. I know, that's so awesome. So awesome. Beach. This is like Key West fishing. It is you start a little, fishing huh? seven miles from the beach. There's some more fish there, Ali. Get another bait in the water. All right, buddy. 
I'm gonna throw this guy on some ice. So it's pretty easy to qualify whether a kelp's gonna bite or not. Um, there are times if you fish a kelp long enough, you'll get that single bite. You know, a yellowtail is down deep and you finally find your bait. We'll give it a drift or two, and if it doesn't bite, then we're on to the next one. I'm bit. Damn, yeah, you're That's bit. That's a good one. That's that big cow that was with that bull. Can you bring this in? There's one right there, see I, ya. He just ate my, boat, my bait. I'm trying to let him get it. Ready? Yep. That's a Dublé Dorado just seven miles off the beach. That's awesome. For yeah, us they're back. not little tiny, we call them Doritos, the little ones. Three. You got that guy, you need help? No, I'm good. I do we need any more, Ali? Are we gonna keep a few more? Man, if they're easy to release, release them. If they're too nice to release, keep them. Uh, you I mean, know, there's, every... about a, there's about an eight pound fish here. I think you can let him go if he's manageable, not hooked bad. The way we've been catching him, I think we can call through him and pick out some of the bigger ones. For sure. This one's pretty though, all lit up. Look at the blue dots on them. Any kind of fishing experience is a good one. Getting out here and fishing with Ali and just seeing something different. I love to see and learn something different. I don't care what it is. It could be from two pound bass to a trout to giant tuna and marlin. I just want to be able to go somewhere and experience different fisheries and learn as much as I can. <laughs>